chapter five. The next day, Chaya sat, Chaya sat on a park bench watching the merchant's house. The stone seat felt cool under her at this time of the morning, and a minor bird twittered on the frangy panny branch overhead. The merchant went out soon after, striding towards the market. But the sun was high in the sky before Nawa came out. She was accompanied by a round-faced woman with a headscarf tied under her chin, who waddled down the street, arm in arm with her. Finally, Chaya sped up the street towards the house after giving Nawa a good five minutes to get away. Chaya was dressed in her usual thieving get-up, a set of ragged old clothes she kept hidden away from her auntie in a drawer. It was surprising how invisible poor people were. Nobody ever noticed Chaya when she was dressed like this. The villa was a typical rich person's house, large and single storied with a veranda twice the size of Chaya's, filled with dark, heavy furniture. One look at the house and Chaya knew this was going to be easy. The gate was open, but there was a man watering the garden. No problem, front entrances were the most guarded part of a house anyway. Same with the back, always a gaggle of servants chatting there. She wasn't going to enter through either of them. Chaya headed to the side of the house, which was partly covered by a mound of tall bushes. Just as she thought, the side wasn't overlooked from the street. She stood for a minute, casually checking to see if anyone was around, then ran up and leapt onto the window ledge. She wasn't going to get in through the window. Oh no, people were careful with windows. That's how thieves got in. She reached up to the roof and hooked one foot over, hauling herself up. The roof tiles were scorching under her bare feet as she tiptoed her way across, careful not to dislodge anything. Voices came from the back of the property. She got to the middle of the house and there it was. The weak point of every rich man's villa, the courtyard. Chaya lay flat on the roof and peered down into the house, squinting till her eyes adjusted to the light. A well-tended garden with sprays of pink bougainvillea lay at the centre, edged with thin pillars holding up the roof of the inner veranda. A servant girl cleared crockery from a small table set with a bench. No one else was in sight. Chaya watched the girl leave, cups and saucers clinking on a tray, then dropped down into the garden, landing lightly on the spongy grass. The girl was walking away down a wide corridor. Chaya rolled over and stepped behind a brass standing lamp. She heard the clinking stop and sensed the girl turn to look back. People never noticed anything when you're still. What they did notice was movement. Chaya stood motionless, imagining the girl's puzzled face looking in her direction. A clock ticked somewhere, counting out the seconds. The tray clinked again as the girl went on her way. Chaya stole out and pushed open a highly polished door with a brass ring for a handle. Inside was a four-poster bed and rich maroon furnishings. A tapestry on the wall had a pattern like the one Neil had been working on, all geometric shapes laid out in stars and triangles. On a stand was a blue-edged length of cloth that was the turban the merchant had worn yesterday. Chaya tiptoed back out. The next door was open, a patterned curtain fluttering across it. This was a sitting room with low couches arranged around a big woven rug. This wasn't the room she wanted either. As she brushed her way through the curtain, a man walked towards her. Fiddling with an inc incense burner, Chaya nipped back behind the curtain. She was conscious of her feet showing underneath, but stayed still to avoid the flash of movement. She stiffened as the man passed on the other side, so close she could smell the bitterness of betel on his breath. His footsteps receded towards the back of the house. Chaya crept out to the adjoining corridor. It led to a dining area with tall windows at the end. A delicious smell came from a tray on the sideboard near her. She lifted up the fly cover on it. There was some kind of fried sweet coated with powdered sugar, still warm and smelling of syrup. Her mouth watered and fingers itched to pop one in her mouth. She dropped back the cover and crept out. She was crossing the courtyard to the rooms on the other side when she heard footsteps. The servant girl was back. Chaya shimmied up the nearest pillar. She wrapped her legs around the top of the pillar, splayed on the ceiling like a gecko, hands gripping the roof gutter for support. That was another thing about people. They never looked up. 
She was stretched to the maximum, her arm muscles thrumming with the strain. The servant girl was right underneath, taking her time with the crockery. She hummed a tune and laid cups and spoons daintily on, on a tray. Chink, chink. Chai's arms and hips were on fire. Chink, chink. She breathed in and out slowly, willing herself to hold on. Chink, chink. Oh, how long was this silly fool going to take? Chink, chink. She was going to fall, she couldn't hold any more. Her body started to sag and she fought to grip the gutter with her sweaty fingertips. The servant girl left, still humming her tune. Chaya dropped and leant on the pillar, catching her breath and massaging her aching arms. There was no time to lose. She bounded up to a panel door across the courtyard and pushed it open. The first thing that hit her was the smell of jasmine. She'd found Nawa's room. It had a smaller four-poster bed with a steamer trunk at the foot of it. A painting of a woman quite like Nawa hung on a wall. On the dressing table were hairbrushes and scent bottles, but right in the middle was Neil's wooden box. Chaya rushed over to it and snapped it up. Finally, this nightmare could end. The two-headed bird etching shone softly on the varnished lid as she opened it and fiddled with the secret catch. A sound of cartwheels startled her as a carriage crunched to a halt outside the house. Chaya snapped the lid shut. There was no time, she had to get out. She'd open it at home. She closed the door softly behind her as she padded back to the courtyard. A high pitched scream made Chaya freeze. The servant girl was standing at the table, her infernal tray in her hand, staring at Chaya. She'd come back for a single cup that she'd left on the table, the silly idiot. The house stirred to attention as voices and footsteps hurried towards them. Sorry, sorry, I'm leaving, Chaya said to the girl. She had no intention of meeting the rest of the household. She threw the box in a high arc onto the reef where it landed with a crash sending a tile sliding down. Chaya leapt up and grabbed onto the gutter, swinging for a moment before pulling herself up to the roof. She plucked the box from where it had fallen and scrammed. She slid down the rest of the roof, tiles scouring the backs of her legs. At the lip, she plummeted down and landed on her feet by the side of the house. Behind her, a back gate clattered open and footsteps scuffled in Chaya's direction. She ran for it. Down the city streets and through the market she went, zigzagging past, past mounds of amberella fruit and cane basket displays and sacks of cardamom and cumin. Then out of the city, past the old war bell and its crumbled down plinth until she was sure she wasn't being pursued anymore. At home, she went straight to her room to change and hide the box before Auntie saw her. She shut the door and flopped down on the bed, hugging the box to her. The thought of Nawa's face when she got home and saw the box gone made her laugh. Served Nawa right for trying to mess with her. The lid had come loose, but otherwise the box was fine. Chaya tapped and prodded it the way Neil had shown her until she heard the click that released the hidden compartment. She took out the drawer and saw the dark shapes nestling among the wood dust. She lifted out one of them, leaving a trail of wood dust on her bed. No, Chaya yelled. She turned the box over and shook the contents out, dumping a dusty mound of pebbles onto her bed. No, 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 the thief, the horrible thief. Chaya scrabbled in the wood dust for the jewels, but all she found was pebbles. Every single one of the queen's jewels was gone. Her fingers closed on a scrap of paper among the wood dust. She shook it off. It was a note, a very short one. Nice try. Now, and that's the end of chapter five. So wait until next time for your next instalment and I'll see you again soon, everybody. Have a nice afternoon. Bye bye.